I think we're going to call this video What If. <laughs> well, I was just doing something in the kitchen and it suddenly, yeah, spoke to me uh, about something that I, it just, yeah, What If. Okay. Say, for example, you go to a church that does communion on a regular basis, but doesn't use wine, doesn't use bread, use some sort of cracker thing. It says, oh, because in the day, their bread would have been more like a cracker. <laughs> Aren't we so clever? <laughs> yeah. In the Lord's Supper. Yeah. Do we need to do it exactly as he did it? Well, we don't know exactly how we, how we did it, do we? Are we making leaven and unleavened bread? Is that what we're doing? Is that what we're using? Are we doing the best leaven or unleavened bread that we can do for that? No. Therefore, shut up about that's what he had. Okay. The only thing we should be doing, as he said, when he said bread, do bread. Okay, if you're going to do unleavened or leavened bread, then make sure it's the best. Why? Because of the fact you're doing that in remembrance of him. Don't just get some cheap crap and say that will do, right? First of all. Now, with regards to wine, you don't have to get an expensive wine, but be there, be guarded. Be there to be guarded. But put it this way, if you don't choose to use wine, this is what this one is about. It's not so much about the bread, but about the wine. The reason is, is because the Lord said, when he said about the bread, this represents my body broken for you. Okay? Okay. What does that represent? My body broken for you means healing, um, deliverance, all that. Yeah? That's what, that's, the bread means that. Right, okay. So we can put that aside for now because the church doesn't really believe in healings and deliverance. So put that aside. Don't worry about that for now. Um, but let's look at the blood. When you sure took the blood, he said, this is, I've just said it. I've just said it. Sorry, when he took the wine, he said, this is my blood. Spilt for you. Okay, this is my blood. So, the Lamb of God. His blood covers your sin. So if the wine represents his blood, and you're not using wine, what if God said to you, okay, right, you're going to be covered in something red, but it won't be blood. We're going to use um, you know, strawberry milkshake to cover you. Who's going to pay for your sins? You are. Come on, you God, you're still using something red. It's still red liquid. Right? What if God just uses grape juice? Yeah, what most churches use, some form of grape juice. That's not wine, it's not alcoholic. So therefore, okay, they won't use wine because, God forbid, you know, in church, use wine. So, what about if someone is an alcoholic? Yeah, are you trusting God? or? <laughs> yeah, we can't. you can't ask those questions. Are you trusting God? Because they get offended by that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all the reasons for not wearing wine, for not using wine, sorry, wearing wine, for not using wine, is fear. Fear. Fear is going to be the thing. All the things the church do that are of this world and not of God, all the things they're saying we won't do that, even though the Bible says do that, is fear related. Nothing other than fear. Go back and you'll see my videos, or you'll hear my videos during COVID, where I was infuriated by the church at that point in time. The church shutting down. When the world, the world, not God, when the world tells the church to shut down. The church shut down, bowed down and said, yes, sir. Who are they saying yes, sir, to? But who's the God of this world? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the church really has been asking for an awful lot of grace and mercy of God 
basic sense of God. We're not going to do this, 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 and this, according to your will. We're going to make it all about Yeshua when he made it about Father, and when he directed us to make it about Father. We're going to do everything against what the Word said, everything against what Yeshua said when he came and talked. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I've said about, um, yeah. So the fact that churches won't use um, what they see as bad examples as an example. They won't talk about that stuff. They won't talk about how to deal with offence. Um, yeah, they will actually encourage people to block people on Facebook and things like that. That's what they're telling people to do. That's against the word of God. See, that's why when, when this whole point about revival, with the church as it is, are we going to see revival? And I think, no. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going to happen. I mean, as I, as I said before, either God is going to get the church sorted out first and then there'll be a revival, or God is going to create another church and bring the harvest in through that church. God will turn his back on the Pentecostal church, the Baptist church, the evangelical churches, that God will just turn his back on all those churches and say, right, you've had your time, you've had your chance, you've had an opportunity to get right with me and to do things according to my word. You know, one's like the Pentecostal church down the road, calling itself a teaching church, and yet doesn't understand the word of God. Even the minister, Manuel, didn't understand the Word of God at all. He had no understanding of the Word of God whatsoever, that man. He said that he could understand Greek and you know, he could understand that um, when, when Philip was faced with the Lord after the resurrection and the Lord said to him, do you love me? He was actually talking about the, that, uh, you know, certain words in Aramaic and what the word in Aramaic means of love and yeah but you couldn't understand love yeah if you can't understand love how can you understand when the Lord is talking about do you love me you can understand only according to what you have been taught and what you've been taught in Bible college eh, sorry as I said with regards to Bible college I will be as graceful as I can be with regards to those, people, those places but even as a college for when they're teaching history they can only teach history from one point of view when they're teaching it they can't teach every single student a different point of view it doesn't work that way there's no way shape or form the uh, tutor could prepare that sort of work and that would be exactly the same for a bible college people can't be taught individually they would be taught collectively according to the understanding or belief according to that bible college as to how people should be taught at that point in time that's what's going to happen and so Yeah, as I say, you know, I've, I've been, people would say I've been hard on the Bible colleges, but there's a reason. They have trained people to produce what we currently see as in church. Yeah, they've trained the likes of Jeff Oaks and Manuel. They've tra trained those people to produce that rubbish, that utter total rubbish. They've trained people to produce that and say that that's good enough. That that is what God wants. Even though none of it really is biblical. You know, the way that that river church is being run by Jeff Oaks, that's not biblical in any way, shape or form. It isn't. It's left wing. But it's not biblical. So, 
Yeah. There's an awful lot of people asking God for grace and mercy. In all the things they do. And as I say, even the point of asking God to forgive you. If you intend to do the same thing over and over again, why are you asking God to forgive you for that? You're supposed to turn your back on your sin. That's the whole point of repentance. You turn your back on that behaviour. You don't intend to keep doing it. If you intend to keep doing it, you're not really turning your back on it, are you? You're supposed to turn from your, your sin and turn to God. You're not doing that if you intend to do the same thing next week. So, yeah. If we want revival, we need to be doing better. We need to at least be doing things according to his word in order to receive what he has for us. Because that's the thing. If you want to unlock the things of the Bible, you're going to do things according to what that says. It really is as simple as that. You, you want to be doing things you know, ish yeah doing a sort of worldly worldly way of that and think that that's going to work no it's not that can't work no well we've seen the fruit of it now We've seen the fruit of it over the last 20 odd years. The fruit has been there. So as I say, that's why when I saw the Asbury revival thing, I only had to see it for a few minutes to see, no, this is not going to work. No, they're just doing church. They're just doing church for 13 days complete church over and over and over and over and over and that's what they were doing it was churchy songs it was a churchy sort of message it was all church and the problem is church hasn't worked the way church is being done has not worked you know the fruit is very very bad indeed Nobody should be eating of that. And that's the point. That's why I say you can't bring the harvest in to what is currently there right now. Because nobody should be eating of that. That fruit is bad. Now, like the Lord said to that fig tree that wasn't producing fruit. I wouldn't have a problem. I don't know, I've said this for years. I wouldn't have a problem if the Lord just said to all these churches, Die. You've had your chance. Die. Yeah. You were supposed to be bearing fruit. You're not. Die. Your time is done. I wouldn't be surprised either if he gave them time and if he sorted them out. If he put people in those churches who would sort them out. But is that happening right now? It may very well be. From what I've seen, no. So I can't speak of what I can't see. I can speak in faith of what I think will happen in the future. But I can't speak of what's happening right now and say, oh, there's some wonderful things going on right now in churches because I've not seen that. Do I think the Asbury thing was good? Now, is it great that you have a load of youngsters come together and you know, they want to praise God and they want to stay there praising God for that time? That's, that's lovely. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. indeed but I mean the point of it is was it spirit led or was it led by people I don't know I don't know I think most likely led by people yeah well we're in, as I said we are in incredible times and being that we're in incredible times you would expect incredible things to happen people to be able to do incredible things and there you go 
I worked it out earlier. They did you know, around about 200 times church. So basically church goes for one and a half hours on a Sunday. They did the amount of time they were doing it for was about 200 times. Over 200 times. The amount of time that you'd normally spend in church. And they did church for that long. Well, think about it. I mean, if that's the case, yeah, there will be things happening, of course, because there's tiredness, there's emotions, there's, yeah, when you start to see other people give their life to God, there's more likely that you're going to do it because you're part of this. And if you are a non-believer and you're part of this and you see other people give their life to God, you're being encouraged to do the same. As you get tired and emotional, you're more likely to do it. Does it mean you've really given your life to God? No, it doesn't. It doesn't in any way, shape or form. Yeah, and that's why the Lord talks about the type of ground. Yeah, in the future, we will see the type of grounds that those seeds fell, fell upon. But that's what I've said about the fact we need to ask questions all the time about all of these things. Yeah. Only when we ask questions are we going to see things from a more realistic point of view. That, of course, if you're doing church for 13 days straight, where you know, you're not getting anywhere near as much sleep as you were before because you're trying to be at this thing because you're hoping to see God move. And so you're having little naps and you're going back to it. You're having little naps, you're going back to it. You're having little naps, going back to it. You're sleep deprived. You're also incredibly emotional. So are you going to start seeing things happening? Yeah. Does it mean that things are happening? Not necessarily. And that's the point. Not necessarily. People sleep deprived. They're going to see things anyway. Because they do. Yeah. Especially for that many days. Yeah. That could have an impact. Because if people who normally get eight to nine hours sleep only get two or three hours sleep each day for 13 days, that's going to have an impact, isn't it, really? Yeah. So, yeah, basically this one is, yeah, what if? What if yeah, God treats you the way you treat him? Basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What if God says, okay, we just use what you use? Yeah. Anyway, you take care. God bless. I'll speak to you soon. Have a fantastic week ahead. Be blessed. Be a blessing. Bye-bye.